Hello, I'm Mari Sato, and I'm a singer, teacher, and ceremony leader. And I'm sitting in my backyard hogan today in Santa Fe, New Mexico, embarking on a series of videos to share my passion and the things that I've learned about bringing community together through song and dance and, and prayer for the benefit of the waters and the future generations. I invite you to watch these videos and take anything that could be helpful for your own personal life and for your community. When I was a child, I was living in a small southern town in Tennessee known as Red Boiling Springs. This was the home of the folk medicine festival. Many people would gather to this little town known for its healing waters. And my family, my two brothers and mother and I lived on the outskirts of this little town, kind of tucked into a mountain in the midst of this very lush pine tree forest and one of my chores was to gather the water because we didn't have any running water um, on the land that we were living and so I would get my two little plastic jugs and I would dance down the pathway of this little dusty road to the springs and the springs was um, just this very inconspicuous um, trickling of water coming down from the mountain that we put PVC pipe into and funneled the water and I would I would gather the water in this way and I remember it being such a visceral experience of of listening to the sounds of the water bubbling and gurgling and then feeling the weight of the the jug you know getting heavy and then the icy cold water falling on my hands and it was such a visceral and beautiful memory I have as a child and sometimes my brothers would come with me and and they'd play in the creek but I was the one as the the female of the family to gather the water that we would use for bathing and cleaning and cooking food and then we'd carry these jugs that became suddenly so heavy in our hands back home and um, I remember, you know, as a child, you say, oh, this is so heavy and it's so hard. But when I got home and gave it to my mother, there was always this sense like life could continue and, and everything was good again. And it was such a, an amazing time of my life as a child to be living very close to nature. My mother was um, a, made brave choices to um, put us in a living situation that was very connected to nature. And I feel like I learned the, the true meaning of what water is for. Water is life, water is source. So now as, a, as an adult and a mother of two children and one on the way, I find myself many times with tears in my eyes over the knowledge that my children don't have the same clean, pure resource that I had only 30 years ago. This is the, the reality of our world right now. The waters um, are treated as a commodity. There are wars and battles um, happening right now on our soil here in America for ownership of the waters. And, and when I was a child, the water was flowing abundant, was very clean, and, and it just has hurt my heart. And I've found myself, you know, looking at my children and, and wondering what it's going to be like for them. Will they have, you know, water, enough resources to live? Is it our responsibility to fix this problem and how can we do it? So this leads me to the teaching um, that came to me through a holy being, water keeper, sort of a spirit being, if you will, 
um, that came in a women's water prayer lodge. And this spirit being really answered a lot of those questions in my heart that I feel for the current state of our, our, our water situation on our earth here. And I was in a pitch dark lodge and she appeared in the middle where the waters are. And she was cloaked all in white and she was gazing over this bowl of water and then she started to speak and she was she was had this face that had the face of all races of women all around the planet and and you you could tell that she was inclusive of of all women and there were three things that she spoke to me the first message that came was that the women are the caretakers of the water at this time that the women are the making the the way the pathway of awakening for humanity on how we are to care for the waters how we are to treat the waters um, she she spoke that that the men are also a part of this awakening and that they too are helping that they will make a circle around the women and with their loving hands and hearts they are going to help where help is needed um, but it would be the women that are going to uh, pave the way for an awakening in humanity. And that it is a very important at this time, women to gather around the waters and offer songs and offer prayers and, and really um, become aware of our way of thinking when we're handling water um, to uplift the vibration of water for the future generations. And that when we do this in a collaborative way with men and women, that there would be a rebalancing of the sacred masculine and feminine. And then she gazed deeper into the water and a second teaching came that the water is the original mirror. That our ancestors first looked and gazed upon their own reflection in water. And there was a, a way of seeing the shape rather than the details in the surface of our faces. There was um, not a, a, a looking at the color of our, our face, our skin, and there was not a, a uh, looking at the details of I have the pointy nose and my neighbor doesn't have but the water was given as a, a gift to, as a mirror to be able to gaze upon the mystery of life and and reflect on that and that it water is multi-layered and fluid and malleable and ever shifting and changing shape and that this is the way of life. Um, so she spoke these words about the water and said, we need to awaken um, and realize that we look at images and the surface of things with such precision nowadays because our mirrors have become hardened and that we are quick to judge ourselves and others and it's creating a lot of division. So if we remember to go back to the waters and, and gaze upon them as a mirror, we can remember the, the way that Creator wants us to, to look and gaze upon all of life and all of humanity. And then the third thing that, that came, she spoke that water is the original medicine, that when we were in the womb, of our mother in the waters, everything we needed, everything to be healthy and vital was provided in those waters from the mother. And then when we were born, our mother's milk and, and her, her water and her blood turned to milk and provided everything we need for our growing and our health and vitality. And then somewhere along the way, we started to believe in man-made material things as providing everything that we need when we're sick 
and, and, and we're in need of something. So she said to remember that it's as simple as breathing into, focusing your thoughts on positive vibrations, singing songs to the water that actually transform the water into medicine, especially for you. And we can remember um, this wisdom and become healthy and vital again the way that Creator made us in the original womb waters. So that water is the original medicine. And then she just disappeared. And I felt a, a, a potent truth in my heart and I, I felt like I wanted to just release all of this, these fears that I have for the future generations, that it's, it's up to me as a mother, and, and I speak to my husband about these things, to um, remember and awaken and start to take action with our, our way of handling water, and our waters of our own bodies and waters of the earth. And as I'm sitting here, and remembering that gift that my mother gave me of, of gather, having to gather the waters for our family um, was such a huge gift that I didn't realize when I was a child. And, and I recall that my, brother, my brothers and I hardly were sick. Um, we were never in the hospital when we were living off the land, really in tune with nature. And if ever I was feeling at all sick, my mother would just say, Madi, go and get a bowl, bowl of water. And she would breathe into it and sing and offer a prayer and I'd drink it. And that's, that's all we needed. And so now I strive to do that with my own children. And we have to be reminded. And I want to, as, as in a humble way, remind us, all of us, brothers and sisters, to... Um, treat the waters with love and kindness and in turn the waters love us and want us to be healthy and well and in balance so i pray for all of the future generations the children to be able to to know and remember that water is the original medicine and an original mirror and may all beings realize the beauty and the wisdom of water. Aho.